Hello and welcome back to Collection Log Completionist, the series where I attempt to fill in a lot of slots in the collection log. It's good to be back! In this video we do a large variety of stuff including a ton of clue scrolls, learning a new boss, and praying to god that we get the Dragon Warhammer. I hope you all enjoy. Ooh, look at that, a new personal best at the Sepulchre, 607, and a new personal best 4 or 5 time, 216, not bad. I still don't think I'm anywhere near the uh, world record runs, you know, I'm, I'm, oh, I'm a solid 17 seconds off the world record there, and just under a minute off of the overall best time. I don't know how these people do it, they must have figured out how to teleport or something. Here's our 210th chest at the Sepulchre, and not so lucky, but that's okay. Uh, I'm still going to be running these, no worries. We are running straight to the end chest though, which means our runs are going to be significantly faster. We will, however, get less hallowed marks, but that's okay. Since we have all the uniques, the only thing we're going to be buying with the hallowed marks are these hallowed sacks. And I'm sure a lot of you guys are curious what kind of loot is included with these. I was really excited to find out what was going to be included in these. But unfortunately, since the amylase part of these uh, sacks did not pass, it's just a couple rolls from each tier of the loot table. Uh, so let's see, let's open this hallowed sack and see what we get. As you can see, it's just standard loot that you get from inside the sepulchre, and, uh, it's nothing too exciting, unfortunately. Altogether, that one was worth 73,000 gold. On average, I think they're supposed to be about 100,000 gold each, so, uh, you know, it's just a nice little boost to the normal loot you get here, but nothing special. A little while ago, they made an update to the game which allows you to trade in spirit seeds and saplings to Guildmaster Jane here in exchange for a tier 5 seed pack. And uh, that's exactly what I'm going to do, since I don't care about farming XP on my main account here. And I do not have any desire to uh, plant anything since I've got the Tangle Root Pet already. I have no other options but to use these Spirit Seeds to trade it for Seed Packs. Let's see how much money we get from... I actually don't know how many I have. I probably should have counted. Alright, we have 78 seed packs. Let's get cracking on these bad boys. Uh, I cleared my bank out of all the seeds I had, but yeah, this is going to take a lot of clicking to open all these. Oh my god. And here is our last seed pack. There we go. We are done. Oh crud, did I accidentally... Where's my... Where? Where's the tab? Here it is. Look at all these seeds. Uh, pretty insane, but that's what happens when you save up all your spirit seeds for god knows how many years I've played this game. Now, I'm not sure, can you get spirit seeds from those seed packs? Uh, you can. I got another one, so we can get another seed pack. Oh my god. Wow, look, at that was a blessed seed pack, that one we just got. What, how much is it? 146k? We got three Celestra seed... Those are potato cactus seeds. I'm a moron. Anyways, let's check out the seed tab. I'm going to go through here and pull out all the seeds that I know are valuable, and we'll see how much money I made. Actually, I figure it's easier if I just go ahead and sell all the seeds on the Grand Exchange. Then we'll have an accurate, you know, price check instead of the sometimes biased Grand Exchange mid-value. Some of these seeds will not sell for the mid-value. I'm going to have to sell them for way cheaper, like cadaver berry seeds. How, how much do these sell for? Like 50? Uh, one. One gold. There's everything sold, and we got 7,337,000 ,000 gold. 7.3 mil is what I should have said. I don't know why I said it like that, but nevertheless, 7.3 mil for 78 or so farming contracts. Not too bad, I guess. You know, that is just about 100k per. But look at this, man. Look at this. The teak seeds only sell for like 31 gold. In fact, most of these seeds will not sell for one GP. So as much as I think this update's awesome, especially for Iron Men, because, you know, it'll just be a bunch of seeds that you can get instead of having to replant your spirit samplings, I think this might have been a pretty big mistake since it seems like the seed market has crashed substantially since this update came out. I mean, how expensive are Renar seeds? These bad boys were rocking like 50k not too long ago, now they're down to like 30k. I don't know. Doesn't seem too great for us normal plebs, but I'm sure some people are going to buy them at their really low price right now, and then in a couple months they'll be more expensive, and they'll have made a couple bills. It's no big deal. Well, we're back at my favorite place in the game, Lizardman Shaman, so we just got a Celastra Seed, which according to my sources is 1 in 3,000, but that's irrelevant. I'm just sharing a rare drop. I'm not upset about it. I know that there's a 5 and 250 chance to hit the seed table and that after that there's no point because it's not going to be a Warhammer, but it still hurts a little bit. Oh, and it has been a long time since I've killed shamans, so a little update on how many shamans I have killed. 6,524. See, 
I do go dry on things. It's just sometimes when I go dry on things, I stop doing them for so long that people forget I'm dry on some things, and then they go, man, you're always lucky. I mean, sometimes I'm always lucky, but shh. So I haven't been paying much attention while I'm doing this, but something I just noticed is they nerfed the Grand Hallowed Chest. You only get one loot roll instead of two now, so this makes the speedrun method even worse, and there's 220 chests with no ring, dang it. We got another rare seed coming in. Unfortunately, it is worth nothing because it takes like five days to grow. So you only need one like once a week and then they're all coming into the game and there's not enough people wanting to buy them. There is our first pair of granite boots since I started grinding these spitting wyverns again. I haven't recorded any clips about it, but I have been grinding them pretty hard. I did like 800 kills yesterday. And uh, yeah, so we're gonna be going for the wyvern visage over time, obviously. It's probably not gonna happen in this video since it's just like 1 in 12,000. It's way too rare. But I've also noticed there's a ton of bots here at the Spitting Wyverns. I have no idea why, because the money here is not that good, but they're here. It has been way too long since we have checked our kingdom. In fact, my gold had gone down to like 200k. I didn't realize it had been that long. I was waiting a while, thinking, oh, I'll wait till it builds up a while. Apparently, I've been waiting a while, so let's collect it real quick, see how many eggs we can get. Wow, 12! bird eggs. I think this is going to be my biggest opening yet. I, I really don't think I've ever had that many bird eggs at once. And I'd like to take a moment to clear up some rumors about the evil chicken outfit and the bird eggs that you use to potentially acquire it. Uh, I've heard a lot of people say, hey, you should trade in mole parts to get eggs. You cannot get egg nests from mole parts, unfortunately. I've heard a lot of people say, that I'm um, wearing a rabbit's foot necklace while claiming for miscellaneous gives you more. Modash unfortunately confirmed that's not true. And I'm sure there are a couple more. You guys could type in the comments if there's any that you're not 100% sure of. But to clarify once and for all, the only way to get bird's eggs in the entire game is to be chopping a tree and get it as a bird's nest drop or to get it from Kingdom of Miscellanea. Unless there's something crazy I'm forgetting, but I'm pretty sure there's not. Well, here goes nothing. I wish I'd kept track of how many bird's eggs we'd used in total to see if we're dry on this thing or not, because there's really no way of knowing. Uh, and it is 1 in 300, so it's overwhelmingly likely that we will not get one. And once again, we do not get one. Man, this is the dumbest item set in the entire collection. I'll just, just proof for anyone who doesn't believe me, we've never gotten one. And uh, thank you to everyone who sends me pictures on Twitter of them getting it. It uh, gives me hope that maybe one day I too can get it. There's 81,000 GP to the bank. So worth it. Look at that. We've got another 2,000 pieces of eight, which means we could buy either the cutthroat flag or the gilded smile flag. Now, I do have to say the Gilded Smile flag sounds better, but I'm kind of a stickler for doing things in the right order. So we're going to buy the Cutthroat flag. Uh, these things are actually a pretty cool cosmetic, as you can see here. You get to wield these cool pirate flags. Definitely worth the ridiculous time investment to get them, in my opinion. Let's do a clue opening. I like opening clues. You guys like watching clue openings, right? I got 222 easy clues. That should be enough to net us at least a couple uniques. We are missing, what is that, 28 items in the easy clue log. Of course, a lot of mega rares, these five, and then these monk robes, which are just ridiculously rare. So seven of those items probably won't get in this opening. Maybe we'll snag one, that would be nice. But I'll do a quick little scroll through so you guys can see what we're missing. Mostly just a bunch of random stuff. And then of course, four pieces of elegant, which is a bit more rare than the common items in the easy clues. We can also get some master clues from this, which would be nice. We have seven masters stacked up, and if we get to 10, maybe I'll open them here. I've also been considering literally just saving up 100 master clues and opening them at once. I think that'd be a lot of fun, but that would be like months and months of waiting. So let's start with the easy clues. I really hope we can get some new uniques. Maybe I should have written down what we were missing. Ooh, Black Helm H1. We are missing one of those Black Helms, I think, so that could be new. Oh, Black Plate Legs G. Uh, Imp Mask, wow, this is why I love easy clues, because you can do them so fast, and the rate of getting uniques from easy clues is relatively high uh, for how easy these clues are to do. See, Bronze, Kai Shield, G, and there we go, a mega rare unique from the easies, that was really fast, Team Cape I, I'm positive I don't have this one, I think the one I got was the X. Either way, let's put it on. These capes are sick. Some of the coolest looking capes in the game, in my opinion. I absolutely love them. And the price reflects that 2 million GP for this beautiful piece of fashion scape. Hopefully that's not the only one we get in this opening. That is fantastic start. 
And another fantastic item. Wow, I get so many of these. Amulet of Power Trimmed. This thing also looks amazing. Great for fashion scape and for worshipping uh, Ceridomen. Uh, but it's 1.3 million GP. So we're making bank off these easy clues. I really cannot complain with the loot we're getting so far. It makes all these random clues where you just get like runes worth it. Ceridomen Rope Top. Another pretty valuable item. Man, I guess you guys should be doing easy clues. I mean, they're fantastic. You could probably do like 30 an hour. Maybe even 40 if you're a crazy EH EHP fanatic or something like that. Another black helm. Ooh, that's pretty nice. Oh my god. Wait, what? Wait, what is this? Flared trousers? 1.9 mil. We're just going to get every rare item that every Iron Man uh, wants to go for. Wow. Uh, flared trousers are really expensive, by the way, in case you don't know. They're required for a deep wieldy master clue step. It's either master or elite. I can't remember. And uh, everybody wants these bad boys for that reason. Uh, Mega rare, uh, amulet of power, and flared trousers, all within the first 25 clues. I don't know what to say. This literally can't get better. Well, maybe it can. Black Wizard Hat G, worth over 300,000 gold. Like, literally, why do any other tier of clue when easy clues exist? I did use Implings to open these, so it did cost me a good bit of money to do these. But you can do them pretty fast still uh, through the ham members method, which you can do probably like 20 an hour if you're really fast. Maybe I'm completely off base with that. But it should be pretty fast as long as you have the thieving level to not fail from them. So... Pretty good clues so far. I fully expect to get a lot of garbage clues now. There's no way that the luck can keep up. We've been getting an awful lot of coifs recently. Pretty suspicious. There's a first unique in a while. Steel Plate Body T and another Black Helm H1 again. Steel Plate Skirt, Bob's Green Shirt. Back to back in a Bob's Black Shirt. Can we get Bob's Pink Shirt? Oh man. Oh wait, oh the double unique. Green Elegant Blouse and a Black Wizard Hat T. Those could both be new items. Um, wait, no, not the Black Wizard Hat T. Sorry, I'm pretty sure I'd have that. But the Green Elegant Blouse, I'm pretty sure I don't have. So I think this easy opening has been exceeding all my wildest expectations. Iron Plate Legs T. Double Coif Clue. Oh my god, our luck is insane. Iron Kite Shield G. Black Shield. I think that's the first one we've seen in this opening. Those are pretty. And our first Master Clue. Oh, that Master Clue took a while. Now we've got... 138 more easy clues to burn through. Lots of cash in these clues. I'd love to see a Zami page and an Iron Full Helm makes for a beautiful quarter million GP clue. Black Wizard Robe Top. Seriously, why aren't you doing easy clues? These are so good. Iron Full Helm G again. Also, I may have peeped the collection log. It wasn't the Team Cape X. It was the Team Cape Zero that we got before, I think. I, I don't know. There's a lot of Team Capes. I can't keep track of all the names, but they all look super cool. Wait, what is that? I hate the way the Iron uh trimmed armor looks it looks so it, it's just it just makes me feel uncomfortable you know when you look at an image and it kind of just strikes your brain in a way that makes you feel existential dread that's what this does right here also another master clue 116 more easy clues to go another black helm i think the one we need is the h4 so i don't think we've gotten the right one i think we've gotten two of the threes two of the ones maybe a five only a hundred more to go. And hey, we're about to hit 1,600 easy clues with a pair of pantaloons. Absolutely beautiful. And on 1,600, another master. Man, I love master clues. I really do. But they kind of make clue openings depressing because, you know, you only get to do some of it. And then you go off on like a half hour tirade, going to the wilderness, going to Mauritania, going to Sherlock 15 times. And uh, it kind of kills the vibe a little bit. Under 100 easy clues left to go, and I think we've already hit the 10 master clue threshold, so we'll be opening them at the end of this easy clue. Masters are always so great. We always get tons of uniques from them. That was a triple firelighter clue. I want to let the court see that. That was a triple firelighter clue, probably my best clue ever. Much better than whatever that garbage was I got back in the day. Blue Elegant Legs and a Black Plate Body. Blue Elegant Legs might be new. Thinking on it really hard, I don't think the Gold Elegant Blouse was new, but I do think the Master Clue is new, so I'll take... Oh, the best loot, like the Studded Body G. I don't... Have I ever worn this? I want to see what this looks like. Wow, I'm holding back a laugh, man. That has got to be one of the ugliest pieces of armor I've ever seen. Iron Plate Skirt G. Another Master Clue. What's the... Isn't the rate of Master Clues from Easy's like 1 in 50? It's pretty rare. Oh, that was a lovely master clue. Is that it's the H3 helm again? How many of those can we get before we snag the H4? Only one man knows, and that is the Almighty God Ash himself. There's black plate legs trimmed. 65 more easy clues to go. I got a good feeling about the last 10 this time around, which I will be spam opening as is tradition. Oh, blue elegant skirt and a black wizzy robe top trimmed. I think the blue elegant skirt might be new. 
I really hope it's new, man. Elegant is like the worst thing in the world because it's so hard to keep track of in my head. And they're more rare than the normal ones, so I hate going for one piece of elegant. Plus, we got another master clue, so yay! We've got ourselves 36 more of these clue scrolls to go through. Hopefully one more little surprise would be nice. That would just make my day. Like I said, I've got a great feeling about the last 10. Oh, the rainbow beanie. I love it. Such a sick item, honestly. Uh, I really want to know who came up with these clue scroll unique rewards because they are an absolute legend. Another black shield. It's the first one we've seen in a long time. And is it? It's the H5. Oh, we've gotten almost every single one except the one we need in just this opening. Fantastic. A blue beret. I used to think these looked so cool when I was younger. I remember buying one and just wearing it on my character all the time, thinking I was thinking I was so cool, but everyone probably thought I was just an edgy nerd. Is that the same blouse we got earlier? It is! Let's go! And I know it's a duplicate, so there's two extra green elegant blouses, unfortunately. The H2. We've literally gotten every single black helm, except for the H4. Unfortunate. Bronze Plate Legs G, perfect fashion scape for all the newbie boobies. A Bandos Robe Top, there's a full, like, Bandos Robes in just this opening, and another shield. Now we are down to the last ten clues. Like I said, we're gonna spam open these as is tradition. I've got a great feeling about these. Let's go spam open these, bab. Oh, okay, we got, well, we got some interesting stuff here. Uh, we got a master clue. Steel Plate Body Trimmed, a wooden shield gold. Ooh, ooh that looks great. Uh, the purple bob shirt, and I believe that is it. How do these bob shirts look, by the way? Oh, yeah. Of course, we still have to look at the easy log and see how many items we got. I think we started at 113, and we're at 117 now. We actually managed to pull four new items from those 222 clues, including that Team Cape I, which is beautiful. We're just missing the X and the Cape of Skulls. And, of course, the other Mega Rares. But a quick little scroll through does reveal that, yep, the Black Helm H4 is the one I'm missing. We have received in total, what is that, 12 plus 8. So we've received 20 Black Heraldic Helms and never gotten the H4. A little bit unfortunate. I, this might have been new. I don't remember. Anyways, a quick little scroll through for those who want to see if anything was new. It looks like the Blue Elegant Skirt was new. Of course, the Green Elegant Blouses were dupes. We're just missing three pieces of Elegant now, which is fantastic. Now, on to the Master Clues. We have 29 out of 34 in the Master Clue Lock. I would love to break into that 30 barrier. It's been so long since we've seen a Master Clue unique, and I mean that. It has been a long time, months and months and months, of just getting duplicates. And uh, I'm not complaining, though. You know, I, I never expect to get anything good from Master Clues again. I fully accept that I don't deserve it. Let's get started on these. They're always fun. Always exciting to see pretty much the full dragon equipment set up in one clue. Rice Cup's favorite, the double U-Seeds. Again, nothing substantial in the uniques department so far, but a lot of decent loot. I will concede that much. We're making a lot of GP off of this. Next clue, nothing. Next clue, we get a Lesser Demon Mask and a Left Eye Patch in the same clue. Would be great, but I've had many, many of those uniques before. Let's keep going on. And on and on, man, Master Clues really do not churn out much interesting, unique content. 132 Wines of Zamorak, what in the hell? That is amazing. I really hope I get that Master Clue on my hardcore sometime. And, uh, yeah, last Master Clue, we've only had one out of these 13, I think it was, Master Clues, to have uniques in them. Last one, nothing. Jeez, dude, Master Clue unique rates are ridiculously low. That is kind of depressing, but nevertheless, the loot from this is pretty good. I will put up a screenshot on the screen of the loot from the Easy and Masters. It might not be perfectly accurate. Sometimes Runelite does miss a clue or two, but there you go. We probably at least broke even. Easy clues usually profit or break even on these. Easy clues, actually, we got a lot of good items. We probably profited pretty decently off them. Let's give some attention to a place that is, you know, not often used except by area locked accounts or people that want that dark blue graceful color. We're talking about the Brimhaven Agility Arena. You go down here, you do some agility, you get tickets, you trade them in for rewards. However, there is one reward from here that is in the collection log, the Pirate's Hook. It also happens to be one of the most expensive rewards at 800 hundred tickets so the way the agility arena works is every 60 seconds uh oh i need to pay to get in here that sucks every 60 seconds a little pillar in there will change and if you get to that pillar in time you'll get a ticket meaning you can get 60 tickets an hour except the karamja gloves four i don't know if you have to equip them or not but they have a 10 percent chance of giving you a second ticket so you can up the 60 by 10 percent it's about 66 tickets per hour means it's going to take like 12 or 13 hours to get this item by some crazy stroke of luck we found somebody else at the brimhaven agility arena sad iron 
and he says he loves the videos. Thank you, Sad Iron. It's good to know other people are suffering here with me. We are now officially over halfway done with the Pirate's Hook grind, and I have to say, I have acquired a newfound respect for Verf and his UIM Karamja account. I'm pretty sure he did this all the way to 99 agility. I don't know how he did it. This is probably one of the most boring activities in all of Old School RuneScape that I have ever done. I'm so glad I only need to get 800 tickets, but it's actually pretty good agility XP overall. Oh, everybody, I'm so happy. Let's tag this last ticket dispenser. 800 Brimhaven agility tickets. So I did some fun little math for us here. On average, it takes about 727 little button presses to get to the 800, assuming that you have the Karamja gloves, which gives you a 10% chance of getting an extra. It took me 737, so I was actually a bit unlucky here. That meant I had to spend 10 more minutes at this place than the average person. So unfortunate, but nevertheless, 800 Brimhaven agility tickets, seriously, is beautiful. If you get 1,000 of these and you have 99 agility like me, I think if you trade them in at the 1,000, uh, agility XP, whatever, I, I don't know how to talk, but you know what I mean. If you trade them for agility XP, 1,000 tickets, you get 647,000 agility XP. So I could keep going and get a ton of cool XP, but instead I'm going to be getting the obviously superior reward, the Pirate's Hook, which, I mean... <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. I mean, this took this took over 10 hours of my life running this agility course to get this pirate's hook. This better look amazing. It does. It defies all expectations I had. That is such a cool cosmetic. It's so stupid. How much is it worth, though? Because it is actually tradable. 4.46 million gold. Nice. And of course, let's go look in the collection log to see the reason why I obviously spent all that time doing it is so that the, the little grayed out slot is now filled in. That was worth well over 10 hours of my life, you guys. We made probably like 300,000 gold an hour. Super worth it. I had a dream last night that I was soloing Nightmare and I got an Inquisitor's Top and then back to back into an orb. It was the orange orb, not the harmonic one. I don't remember what the orange one's called. So it wasn't like, you know, billions of gold. But I had this dream, and I thought it was weird because I never fight Nightmare on this game. So I thought, you know what? Let's pretend it's a premonition and take this as a sign to learn solo Nightmare. We don't have a single unique in the Nightmare collection log section. So I figure when's a better time to get into it than now. So I'm going to try and learn Solo Nightmare. I've watched the guide on it. It does not seem easy. It seems quite daunting, actually. But I'm going to do my best. We're going to do it whether I die 50 times or whether I die zero times. We're going to get at least one Solo Nightmare kill right now. You guys have no idea how many people are doing this. I seriously, it took me about like 100 world hops to find a free world. I really hope I can pull this off first try because if I die and come back and someone's here, I might lose my mind. Oh, dude, no way. First try. My first try. Oh, yes, we did it. A solo nightmare kill. Wow. And what do we get? Let's get some fish. Oh, we got nature runes. 32,000 gold. Wow. Oh, 24 minutes and 16 seconds. Definitely not the most impressive solo time, but still pretty decent. Oh my gosh. I'm so happy, you guys. I, I mean, I've never killed that boss in my life solo. 30 normal kills, though. That was extremely satisfying. I won't lie, a 24-minute fight. I made my fair share of mistakes. As you can see, I got all the way down to one brew remaining. I messed up most in the second phase. That parasite is quite pesky. But if I could do that on my first like first attempt in a long time, I think that I could probably get this down consistently. The thing I really need to nail is getting my kill times down to like 20 minutes-ish, because that means then I could get like three kills per hour. If I get serious about this, I'll start bringing an alt to supply me there so I can actually consistently keep killing this thing. But yeah, wow, that was extremely satisfying. So just in case you guys are wondering how rare the uniques are from the Nightmare, besides the pet, we're going to look at everything else. The armor slash weapons table, which includes all of the Inquisitor and the Nightmare staff, has a 1 in 120 chance to hit that table, and then it rolls a random piece. And then the orbs are a 1 in 600 chance to hit the table, which it then rolls a random piece of that. Meaning, on average, it's about a 1 in 100 chance to get a unique from the Nightmare from a solo kill. 
that is in your name. So 100 nightmare kills at 3 an hour is going to take me like 34 hours, assuming I never die or mess up and I get a little bit better at killing it faster. More realistically, it's going to be like 40 hours of grinding this boss to see one unique item from it. But that's why I'm setting my sights on this as more of a long-term goal. I'm definitely not just going to sit at nightmare for 10 hours a day. Uh... It's not really realistic because I have to hop worlds to find a place, and I would go absolutely insane. But I do look forward to grinding this out. I want to get a couple unique items in the log here. I would say I'd be very happy if I could obtain uh, at least one orb, a couple pieces of Inquisitor or the staff, and maybe the pet or jar. Those would be fantastic. The nice thing about the pet and jar, though, is they're faster to grind out in the group. So if I somehow miraculously get all of the other drops besides pet and jar, I could just go into like a six-man group with crazy gear and finish kills in like five minutes. And there we go, another nightmare kill. You can see the improvements. I've got a brew and a half left, and I handled the second phase pretty good because I've got a whole sand few left, whereas last time I think I had one dose or zero doses of sand few left. So yeah, a big improvement. And we cut down on the fight duration by about two minutes. Not too bad for a second attempt, in my opinion. Oh, this is actually fun. It's like the only boss in the game besides raids that I really haven't delved that deep into before. So it's kind of fun learning all the mechanics of it and learning the little things I can do to improve. Plus, my gear is actually not best in slot here. I could get Inquisitor's Mace and the Inquisitor's Armor to upgrade, but that's like 1.7 billion gold or something for the whole set. I don't have that much cash right now. So my Twitch chats recommended that I get the Blood Fury since it's much better at Nightmare, especially for noobs like me. So we're going to upgrade our Fury into a Blood Fury. All my cash is going to go down the drain. It honestly looks sick. It looks like a uh, budget version of the Amulet of Fury. I mean, it's like the same exact thing, but red. Gotta commend the art team. So with the Blood Fury, we are at the end of phase one here. If I can hit anything other than a zero, I've hit like 12 zeros in a row. And I haven't used a single dose of brew. So uh, yeah, I'd say this thing gets my seal of approval. Absolutely. Anyways, I'm going to be ending the video off here. I'm pretty sure this is going to be an insanely long video, definitely longer than 25 minutes. I really hope you guys all enjoyed, and I want to thank you so much for watching. If you guys are enjoying these videos and want to see more, I have started a second channel where I'll be uploading mostly non-RuneScape related content. Maybe I will throw some RuneScape stuff on there occasionally that I don't feel like uploading to the main channel. I've only got one video on there now, but I think it's quite a banger. Anyways, thank you all so much again for watching. If you want to support the channel, drop a like, subscribe, check me out on Twitch. All the links are in the description. Anyways, I hope you have a fantastic day, and I will see you next time. Goodbye.